Welcome to the Landscape Library's YouTube channel. I'm Jordan, founder of the Landscape Library and voice behind the tutorials. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and visit our website, thelandscapelibrary.com, to read landscape-focused articles or enroll in our online courses teaching the top softwares for landscape design. If you have questions or comments, add them below and enjoy the video. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the command extrude surface in Rhino. And this part of the training or the course is when we start to uh, build 3D models, which is really exciting. So we learned how to draw through 2D, make surfaces, and then also create surfaces without the use of curves in Rhino. And I will just recreate um, the series of what we've done. So we use the rectangle, planar surface. We have a surface in perspective view. And we can also use the command plane that we also have another surface. So in the previous tutorials I showed you how to extrude a curve and then cap it to become uh, a 3D object. Now for extrude surface you can see that when I type in extrude there are quite a few commands that come up. All of these are very useful but I'm just going to stick with extrude surface for um, this tutorial. I suggest looking into these on your own and experimenting what they do um, so we're going to use extrude surface and we're going to select the surface. I'm going to right click and you can see that it can pull or extrude the surface in the direction that I'm moving the mouse. Now if I left click it'll complete the um, command and now I have a full object um, rather than extruding the curve and then capping it. For this tutorial I'm going to walk you through how to recreate the Farnsworth house which is a iconic modern building built by Mies van der Rohe. Um, I will bring it into the screen here. Um, you can see that it is raised above the ground. This actually this building was built in a floodplain so the architect raised the building. You can see here um, through the architectural digests that this is what it looks like when it's built. So I'd like to just recreate this through a series of planes and that way you could get an idea of how to start and think uh, to build 3D models in Rhino. So to start things off I'm going to use the rectangle command and like I said to draw in 2D is always faster than to get into 3D first. So I'm going to use the rectangle command. I'm going to do three point and I'm going to draw one of the dimensions of this house is 80 feet. Thirty feet up. I'm just going to move this off the point of the origin. I'm going to use a construction line here, and the construction line is because I have the Smart Track turned on and O Snap turned on. So I'm going to just hover over the endpoint, slightly move in that direction. Rhino is registering that that is the track of the point. I'm going to use the command divide, select this line. I'm going to enter six to get six different points. And this is how we're going to create grids within the landscape. Now, grids are super important through um, any type of architecture or engineering. It creates cohesiveness. Um, so we're going to, um, and later on, we're going to use how, how to use grids throughout the landscape. And I'm also going to create separate lines that are coming through this house here. Um, this is, like I said, this is how a house can be structured. It's based off of all interval uh, interval points, so contractors know that um, this house is split up in, in certain measurements. So then I'm also going to grab here, you can see that on the house, for example, that this edge of this house is coming into maybe about one third into, um, here's a better picture, it's coming into just like maybe the middle of the house. So we're going to use the grid system here and we're going to draw another three-point rectangle with the direction going down as 30 feet and in the other direction 50 feet. I'm also going to do the same thing. I'm going to create another construction line that is coming off of the bottom porch of this architecture. Select the curve and I'm also going to use um, six same thing, I'm going to draw construction lines using the copy command. I'm just going to copy it along the point. This will be the basis of design. 
Now you can see in the house that there's these sort of mullions or these plinths that are holding up the house. We're going to recreate that. It might look like six or eight inches, but we're going to use six inches um, using the rectangle command. Type in six inches one direction, six inches in the other. I'm going to move this object on the midpoint because of the O snap is turned on. And we know that it is midpoint because it's checked down here. So I'm going to use midpoint, copy it along the grid system. And it is skipping every other one. So the bottom plinth has only three. I'm going to use the mirror command. Select the midpoint of the bottom structure. I'm going to copy the same mullion on the north side of the building. Same thing. There's only, I believe, three mullions. So we are going to copy this three different sections, skipping that middle grid point. Use the command mirror and mirror the mullions on the other side. Now, in this, uh, in this case, so we don't have any layers brought into uh, Rhino yet. We would probably have all these different lines on different layers, indicating that um, this is maybe a def point line or a construction line. This is maybe a lower patio, and this is the house. Um, but for this sake of this tutorial, we're just going to use all one layer. And I'm going to delete these construction lines for now. In future episodes, we can just easily turn them off. Now you can see in this uh, in this picture that this is raised about um, four feet or two, uh, two feet. There's about four risers. So we got one riser, two riser, three and four. It's about two feet, six inches in between. So we're going to raise this top section here um, two feet above the surface. And I'm going to type in planar surface. And I'm going to use the gumball. If, it's the, if the gumball is not turned on, you can turn it on. I'm going to use the arrow to go up two feet. You can see that the line is copied down there. Um, and this one is four feet high, so another four more risers to the top area. But before I draw this, you can see that in the structure, uh, there is kind of this um, glazing that happens in between the two different, I'd say the floor plane and the roof plane. So I'm going to recreate that quickly through just drawing a rectangle, snapping it to the midpoint of the mullion. We're going to select both of these lines by holding shift. I'm going to bring it up four feet. I'm going to select this bottom plane, do planar surface, and this is where we can use the command extrude, uh, extrude curve, select the curve, and we're going to just extrude this curve up, uh, let's do 12 feet, we're going to copy this plane up as well to the top here, so now we're starting to build starting to build or outline the architecture here. We don't have any thicknesses yet, and that's where we're going to use extrude surface. And for the bottom plane, I'm going to uh, go down six inches. So I'm going to type in extrude surface, select the curve, add in the bottom direction six inches. Do the same thing for all the different planes, so six inches and six inches. Now we still have the mullions to do, so I'm going to just select the different curves along the line. I'm holding shift to select all of them and I'm going to do planar surface, type in planar surface. Now I'm going to use the command extrude surface to bring these bottom mullions up. I'm holding the shift commands to select these individually.
in future episodes, I can show you how to um, select these curves without scrolling in. There's commands like select curves um, where it will only select the curves in the model. So I now I'm going to use extrude surface and I'm going to bring these curves up all at once. You can see that I'm bringing them all up and they go to about the top structure. So now we have this um, outline of the structure. You could get more detailed by simply copying this plane up and we can use the scale command to scale you can see that I just used the smart track to find the middle of this the middle of the surface and we could just offset this just a little bit to show that there is a different roof structure and the one thing that we're missing is the stairs. So if we wanted to draw in plan view or in elevation view, this is where it becomes really helpful. So we can use the, um, the curve command and let's just draw really quick. All right, we could go one foot out, six inches down, one foot out, six inches down, out six inches. So we have the outline of the structure, and this is where we can also use maybe extrude curve. We can copy these stairs up. We can use this mullion as a base point or even just the surface of this curve, and we can bring it up to the edge here to the intersection. Um, and we can use the gumball cursor to just move this quickly. In future episodes, we could see how we can get that really close. So you can see that really quickly, we have um, an outline of the Farnsworth house. This would be glazing, so you can see through this. And we have now a quick recreation of the house. And that is how you use extrude surface. Um, like I said, if you can draw in 2D first, you're basically just getting the function outlined. And then when you're in Rhino, what's the point of Rhino is you're, is you're communicating ideas in 3D. So that's that Z direction that's going up. We can always um, play with the Z direction. But if you look at in you know plan view, that is how you're looking at the function of space, how much space does, you know, does a patio have? Um, how much space does the architecture have that this person is occupying? Um, like I said, the Z direction would be the ceiling. So whether that's eight feet or 12 feet, you can determine that in the elevation view.